day spring from on high and cheer us by thy drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadow put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Good morning, everyone. This is Moki Hino, the priest in charge, and I would like to welcome you all to the virtual service for the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd here in Wailuku, Maui this morning, which is Second Advent. And we will begin this morning on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer or in the virtual bulletin that was sent to you and the link of which should be on the Facebook page this morning. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, 
Have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now for the reading of the first lesson and the psalm. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I say, What shall I cry? All the people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely all the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Here endeth the reading. Psalm 85 You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from the heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go down before him, and the peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Thank you very much for those readings, and now we will have the reading of the epistle. A reading 
from the second letter of Peter. Do not ignore this one thing, the love that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about this promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire. And the earth and everything that is done on it will be destroyed. Since all of these are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because in which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved? And the elements will melt with fire, but in accordance with this promise, we wait for new heaven and a new earth, for righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by being at peace, without spot or blemish. Regard the patience of our Lord as salvation.
we will have the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Math Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Once again, thank you so much to Mother Linda Decker for reading the Gospel. Uh, we actually recorded her doing that reading on Thursday and there was a line in there that Linda read uh, while we were recording that really really struck me and that line is he John proclaimed the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me which is why I am electing to deliver this sermon not in a very nice clergy collar but in this t-shirt. Uh, this t-shirt I got it on the North Shore of Oahu several years ago and I noticed the store in Haleiwa and uh, as I passed by I, uh, I remembered that I'd seen this on many, many um, bumper stickers and things, and I thought, what is Hecky? You know, it's like H E backwards K I. What the Hecky is Hecky, you know? And so um, I went into the store and I, I asked the sales clerk, I said, you know, I really like your t shirts, and everybody has these. Um, these bumper stickers that say hecky and she looked at me and she said this is not hecky this is he is greater than I it's based on the story of John the Baptist well ladies and gentlemen having been a third grade teacher who taught greater than less than you know and the the mouth eats the bigger number I felt about this small when she pointed out what that meant to me uh, and then, of course, Linda, reading the, the gospel today reminded me uh, of that. And so I thought I'd put this on in honor of Linda's uh, 10th ordination anniversary. So uh, when you see this, remember, he is greater than I. Uh, I think if John the Baptist had figured that out and proclaimed that to the world, uh, it's incumbent upon us to figure that out and embody that for the world uh, by the way we uh, act, think, live. Uh, and as I say that, I realize, oh my goodness, well, that's a lot easier said than done, isn't it? It's um, There's this thing called the ego that can sometimes get in the way of that um, and whether we're preparing for the arrival of the Christ child at his birth in the manger and commemorating that whether we're preparing for the second advent which is the second coming of Christ uh, which will signal the end of the ages, whether we're preparing for the third advent, which is the daily arrival of uh, Christ in our hearts, uh, we, the first step is to really remember that he is greater than I, which is why John the Baptist subsequently said, I must decrease so that he might increase and he was trying to tell the people around him you know this is not about me 
um, this is about him. Uh, and then he pointed toward, toward Christ. I uh, really think that one of the keys to all of this is the notion of humility. Now, a lot of people think that humility and humiliation are synonyms. In my mind, they're not. I, I mean humility. Uh, humiliation is being put to shame in a very hurtful and harmful way and I don't buy into that at all but humility the the a really good definition that I got years ago was humility is the right understanding of my weaknesses and strengths uh, not a wrong understanding of my strengths but a right understanding of my strengths there are things that i have to offer the world through the grace of god and it's incumbent upon me to use them for the building up of the kingdom uh, and and humility also uh, there's a greek word kenosis that is often translated as humility and kenosis means a self-emptying the classic example of course being jesus going to the cross and completely emptying himself to the point of death on the cross as it says in in scripture uh, i think that that kind of humility will lead to spiritual awakening and really spiritual awakening is what it's all about especially at this time of year uh, and so let's prepare let's let's become humble and uh, let's get ready and let's be spiritually awoken as the Christ child comes our way um, one of those one of the ways to do that um, is to endeavor to get rid of the faults that we like about ourselves. Um, I, I could give you a list ad, ad nauseum of what I mean, but the faults we like about ourselves. Um, I, I have encountered people in my ministry who are proud of their anger, uh, who are proud of their position in the church, and in the church hierarchy, which goes against this notion of he is greater than I. Uh, but then there are the, the, the parts of our unconscious or the content of our unconscious that we're not even aware of many times. These are things like resentments, um, self-pity. Uh, the, those kinds of things that I think at this time of year we're called to empty. Now, I'll tell you right now, I can't do that by myself. I simply don't have the skill based on my humanity, but that's when we ask for the help of God uh, to help us dash those things from the content of our conscious consciousness. Uh, and we do that and become empty throw up our hands, surrender, so that God can come in and really be fully present with us, not just at Christmas, but every day of our lives, so that really every day is, is Christmas, not just once a year when we party out and open the presents under the tree and then wring our hands and stress about, oh, how are we going to pay for it all? Um, but we want we want it so that Christ can uh, enter in, and not maybe maybe not even so much that Christ can enter in, but so that we can become aware of the indwelling Spirit of Jesus that's there inside of us all the time, but whose light can't shine through because we have all these ego things that we're being called to get rid of, um, not only at this time of the year, but, but, but pretty much always. And then um, that the beautiful thing about that is then, then we figure out that things like COVID-19 uh, and this god-awful year that we've all gone through called 2020, uh, that's not God's will. Uh, that's not God doing something to us. Uh, but when we, for, for like some kind of punishment or something, I don't buy into that theology, but things around us happen 
And I think that what um, something like COVID-19 does is God turns it into a tool. Um, God takes something like COVID-19 or whatever trials and tribulations we're going through in our lives so that we can learn to just surrender and let that God light that's within all of us shine through uh, the windows into our soul that are our eyes and uh, to cast that light onto the world. Uh, but it's going to take remembering that um, you and I are not God. Uh, God is God and uh, he is greater than I just like John the Baptist said. Um, so uh, for w with that insight, I really do invite all of us um, not, not to abrogate or deny the festivities and all those kinds of things because Lord knows we need them um, and that sense of joy and a good feeling that comes along with all of it. Uh, but in addition to that, to take time to, as the psalm says, be still and know that God is God and that God is greater than I. And to offer that as the gift to the Christ child who has his indwelling in each and every one of us because that's going to be a wonderful Christmas gift to the Christ child and it's also going to be a wonderful gift to ourselves so uh, with that please remember this t-shirt does not say hecky it says he is greater than I <laughs>Together, let us affirm our faith by reciting the words found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. Pray for the Anglican province of South America and the most Reverend Greg and Sylvia Venables. Pray for St. Luke's Honolulu and the Reverend Ray and Vivian Wu. We also ask your prayers for Michael, our presiding bishop, Robert, our bishop, and Moki, our priest, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for Donald, our president, Joseph, our president-elect, David, our governor, and Mike, our mayor, for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially Ambrose, Richard Baxter, Thomas Burton, Carl Barth, Francis de Sales, and Jane de Chantal, whom we remember today. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now, in the words our Lord and Savior taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Make straight the way of God. 
Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.